In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. What if the Holy Spirit came? Perhaps I should back up and ask first, what is the Holy Spirit? John Killinger, in his book, You Are What You Believe, reports a survey he made. He asked five people the question, who or what is the Holy Spirit? Here's what they said. Should I know the answer to that? It's the same as the Holy Ghost, isn't it? Sounds scary to me. I don't know, I'm not into all that new age stuff. It's the Spirit of God, I think. Now what's interesting about this survey is that these five people were not random pedestrians standing on some street corner. They were standing in the hall of a church, of which they were all members. Four were adults and one was a teenager. When Paul reached Ephesus, he met some Christians, and during the introductory conversation, he's asked them, have, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they answered, we, we've never even heard about a Holy Spirit. So evidently, much of the modern church is also ignorant of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God present with us. We know God in three ways, as the Trinity. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are not separate entities. God is one. We know water. We know water as liquid and solid when it freezes into ice, and, and vapor when it's boiled and turns into steam. We know water in three ways, yet water is water. It's all the same substance. You know me now as, as a preacher, but I'm also father, husband, grandfather, citizen, but I'm one and the same person. But you know me and you experience me in different ways. We know God in three ways. God the creator created all there is and is still creating. God the Son, the Jesus, walked on this earth as a human being. And God the Holy Spirit is God present with us. The Holy Spirit is God in action. The Holy Spirit moves with might and power. I'm not talking about some wimp of a God here. I'm not talking about uh, sugar and sweetness and syrup. I'm not talking about superficial blessings. I'm not talking about a pat on the hand and an easy assurance, oh, things will be all right. I'm talking about power. When the Spirit came upon David, David killed a lion. When the Spirit came upon Samson, Samson pulled out a temple. When the Spirit came upon Jeremiah, Jeremiah preached to the king and confronted the king with what he was doing wrong. And for his courageous effort, Jeremiah was thrown into a well. When the Holy Spirit came upon the timid, anxious, frightened disciples hiding in an upper room, the experience was so vivid they could hear the sound of a mighty wind. And thanks to the clavinova, we heard the wind, but they didn't need a clavinova. You notice what I, could, I, what I could do this morning? I could make fire and I could make wind. How about that? <laughs> First time. <laughs> the experience was so vivid, it was like the rush of a mighty wind. It was so real, they could see flames of fire, like those over their heads. The experience was so powerful, they left the upper room as people of power. And they began to witness. Peter preached, 3,000 responded, and the church was born. Now that's power. What if the Holy Spirit came? When the Holy Spirit comes, people are transformed from timidity into courage, 
The power of God reaches into the depths. The fire of the Holy Spirit cleanses and purifies, forgives and makes new. Old sins and long memories are, are rooted out. Anxiety and worry are discarded. The power and control of habits and, and addictions are, are broken. Broken spirits and broken <laughs> bodies are healed. Sorrow and grief are turned into gratitude and joy when the Holy Spirit comes. <coughs> Last Friday, several of us uh, we're treated to a tour of the Arvin Sankel plant by the manager, our own John Admire. Wave, John Admire. <laughs> the Merced plant makes exhaust systems for the Fremont Toyota plant. We were very impressed with the efficiency of the operation and with John's administrative skills. And all over the plant, there are hanging motivational signs. One reads, Perfection, the only standard worth working towards. Perfection, the only standard worth working towards. As Christians, perfection is our goal. To be perfect is the only goal worth working towards. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Holy Spirit sanctifies, which means to, to cleanse, purify, to perfect you, to make you the person you were created and called to become when the Holy Spirit comes. What if the Holy Spirit came to our church? When the Holy Spirit comes, language barriers collapse. When the disciples left the upper room as people of, of, of power, people of courage, they began communicating in other languages. They witnessed to the visitors who were there in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. They told them about Jesus. They found the words they needed. They didn't rehearse. The words were just there. The, the language barrier was transcended. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon a church, we can communicate on levels deeper than language. We communicate with, with hugs of affirmation with smiles of encouragement, with tears of compassion, with the laughter of joy when the Holy Spirit comes. What if the Holy Spirit came to our church? When the Holy Spirit comes, we can forgive each other's sins. That verse was missing from the scripture led this morning. But the resurrected Christ said to his disciples, John 20, 21 and 23, receive the Holy Spirit, he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Did you hear the influence, the, the power we have over one another? The power a congregation can build each other up, or tear each other down. We can increase each other's pain, or decrease pain. We can encourage each other, or we can discourage. We can set each other free, or we can increase the ropes of bondage. We have the power to forgive sin. What if the Holy Spirit came? When the Holy Spirit comes upon a church, we are given the power to witness. Jesus said to his disciples to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. I'm not talking about a wimpy social club where the members sit around wish things would never change, massage each other's egos, and keep other people out. I'm talking about a church on fire. I'm talking about a church that's been blown upon by the Holy Spirit. 
A church that opens its doors and welcomes everyone, regardless of who or what they are. Bill, a college student, decided to go to church one Sunday. And with his wild hair, his t-shirt with holes in it, wearing jeans, no shoes, and probably things dangling from his ears, he walked into a very formal church where all the men wore suits and ties. One of those kinds of churches. Well, the service was in progress, but the minister stopped as Bill walked down the center aisle looking for a seat, the church was packed. But finally, Bill went all the way to the front and sat down on the floor right in front of the Pope. Well, there were gasps all over the congregation, and you could feel the tension in the air. An old 80-year-old saint of the congregation, a godly man, elegant and dignified, with silver gray hair, wearing a three-piece suit, walked down the aisle with his cane. The congregation knew what he had to do. And they were silent, and the minister was silent, as the old man walked slowly down the aisle, clicking his cane. When he reached Bill, he dropped the can, with great difficulty, lowered himself to the floor, sat next to Bill, and together they worshipped. And a burst of emotion, <coughs> choked up with emotion, was the congregation. I suspect the Holy Spirit came upon that congregation that day with might and power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a church, I see a church where everyone is welcome. A church where our people are transformed into witnesses, transformed into ministers. A church that loves and serves in Jesus' name. A church where each member has a ministry and is given the gifts of the Spirit to do the ministry. I'm not talking about a church where its members squabble over things that are unimportant as they pursue the trivial. I'm talking about a church on fire that has a mission for the community. A church that provides after school care and summer day camp and vacation Bible school for children. A church that cares about families in need and opens wide its doors. A church that opens its arms to welcome a new woman pastor. A church that is not a museum, but uses its facilities for mission. A church that dares to experiment, that tries to reach new people with contemporary music service. A church that cares about youth and provides a ministry that is powerful in its outreach. A church that sends its youth as far away as Bolivia to do God's work. I'm talking about us. <laughs> about our church because the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And we are, and we have been led into a mission we never thought possible, and we do have done things we have never dreamed that we could do. And I'm encouraging us this morning to be open to what God next has in store for us. Great adventure. What if the Holy Spirit came? Let me ask you some questions for self-examination. And your answers to these questions will help you evaluate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Just answer these inside yourself. <coughs> Has the Holy Spirit made Jesus real to you? Are you beginning to hear the inner voice of the Spirit guiding you? Are you experiencing a new kind of love for other people? Are you experiencing power 
in living your life and doing the work of God. Are you receiving help from the Holy Spirit in praying? In praying. Is there increasing evidence of the fruits of the Spirit in your life? Like gentleness, joy, peace, self-control. Are you receiving gifts of the Holy Spirit to do your ministry? Are you going on to perfection? If not, where are you going? Backwards? And my last question. Have you asked to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you asked? The Holy Spirit cannot be turned off and on like a faucet. We're not in charge. God decides if and when. We can only ask, pray for, ask for the Holy Spirit. Be open so God can fill you. Be open. And act on that which you have already received. Why will God give you more if you haven't acted on what God has already given you? When God frees you from anxiety and worry, don't take them back. Leave them there with God. When God calls you to do a ministry, even if it is small and insignificant, you think, do it. And even if you think it's too big for you, do it. Don't be afraid or intimidated. Act. And when God calls you to perfection and expects you to repent and make some lifestyle changes, do it. How can you expect more strawberry shortcake when you haven't finished what is already on your plate? How can God give you big blessings if you haven't acted on the, on the little blessings? Oh, what if the Holy Spirit came? People transformed. Language barriers transcended. Each other's sins forgiven. Power to witness. Wow, what if the Holy Spirit came? Be ready. Ask and act.